and um, had to quickly shift to, there was a thing blocking the slide here, sorry. We quickly had to shift to online and, you know, that was sort of emblematic of what happened to all of us over this, this last year. We were um, happily working in our offices and then suddenly had to shift to our lives being online and virtual. Um, the universities and the libraries all dr dramatically reduced the staffing um, in their buildings, usually down to zero, at least initially. And then over time, we slowly began to bring people back as we started to restart some of the services that could only um, happen if we had people on campus. And so we've, we've all really had to make uh, tremendous changes in how we operate. And yet we've, we've persevered. And I really feel like we've made some great progress over this past year. Um, both you at, at, at your libraries but we as a consortium also have um, moved our initiatives forward. Um, we've had some uh, really excellent open educational workshops for faculty. That was a new initiative this year and that really went well. We joined the Library Accessibility Alliance to help improve the quality of the online databases that we purchase. There were a, a, a great number of professional development opportunities and the e-resources committee uh, put together some workshops. We had Catholic University invited everybody to their digital scholarship workshops. Um, we hired uh, all uh, ex Libris to come in and do the Alma op optimization workshops and those are just about done. And so we've, we've really had some great professional de uh, development opportunities. With Alma, we did some, uh, the, the main, the, the big thing we did there was that we uh, implemented a new architecture for the shared collections facility, which made the, the whole process of managing circulation of materials between the, the libraries uh, more efficient. And so it's been a, a strange year, but we've also made some really good progress on things. And so again, I really want to thank you for, for all of that. The Sharing Expertise Committee uh, has tried to develop a plan that for the annual meeting that really um, allows us to continue with the things that we value most about the annual meeting. Uh, and one of the things I would I want to just remind you all of is that we will be sending you a post annual meeting survey. And this year in particular, it will, it'll be important for us to get your feedback, to understand what does work well in this virtual environment and what things maybe are better in person so that we can think about what an annual meeting in 2022 might look like. So Hall, next slide, please. And so for this year, we've try, tried to create some of those kind of informal social events that are so valuable about getting together in person. We've got virtual coffee and tea in the mornings at 9.30 on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, a number of the interest groups are getting together um, and they will be meeting, the two of them will be, one of them met yesterday, two of them are meeting uh, two, today and uh, tomorrow. We've got a mindfulness break on Wednesday and Thursday at 1.15. We've got the 16 concurrent sessions with the presentations by, by all of you. And um, we really wanna thank all of you for your contributions to that. Um, it, really, it is these presentations that, that, that are the core of what the DevRLC annual meeting is about and really getting to hear how you have done your work and, and the research that you might be doing and your interest in sharing that with the community is really valuable. It's, it's key to the value of what the WLC annual meeting has been about. And then we'll wrap this all up and I hope at least some of you will join us in a, in a virtual happy hour so we can just sort of get a chance to talk to each other. And we are very fortunate today to have a Elena Norlin, who is going to be talking with us about why DEI training is not working. And it honestly um, was not until this morning that, that I realized that we are doing this workshop 
on the one year anniversary of the death of George Floyd. And so I think it's very appropriate that we are taking this time to think a little bit about this and how we can improve our work together. Uh, and uh, really appreciate Elena um, for joining us and helping us with that. Next, please. <clears throat> Uh, at, a, at the April meeting of the Library Directors Council, um, they approved a code of conduct. I debated about whether to highlight any words um, because every word um, on these two slides is important, but um, I think these are particularly important. You know, what we're trying to create here and, and ensure that we have is a welcoming, open, safe environment that allows us to collaborate as peers in comfort and safety, um, that is thoughtful and respectful, and next slide, and free from har harassment. And so I hope that you all um, agree. I mean, I think that the, this is the way the DevRLC has always operated, I think. Uh, and so I don't think this is anything um, different and un or unusual for us. Um, but certainly if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're fear, fear like fear, feel, sorry, feel like you are being harassed, um, you should contact me, contact the uh, direct, the chair of the library directors council, um, Allison Gregory at uh, Marymount right now, or any of the other WLC staff. And we will certainly try to uh, in, uh, address the situation and try to make sure that we, um, resolve it. Next slide. And so now I turn it over to Paul Baldwin at Marymount, who is going to talk about a new, another one of our uh, initiatives for this year that got successfully completed. So take it away, Hall. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hall Baldwin. I am the Access and Outreach Librarian at Marymount University and the Chair of the Sharing Expertise Committee. So in addition to planning this virtual week and meeting, we also created and developed a sharing expertise inventory um, along with Tom Boone who created the public facing interface that I am going to share with you now. So just a little bit of background, uh, the steering committee charged the SEC with leading the effort to build a database or inventory of expertise across our consortium in spring 2020. And so what that basically just means is they wanted a inventory, um, a web application, anything that could kind of house all the knowledge, the experiences, the skills, and also learning opportunities of everybody in the consortium. So in spring 2020, we were charged with this. And then in fall 2020, we really began uh, work on this, on this charge. So Mark found an example from Polney and they were wonderful and shared their metadata with us. And so then we revised and edited the metadata to best reflect the WRLC. And so we added WRLC specific applications, software, and created an entire new category of special collections. And so while we were working on the metadata, Tom Boone was created the public facing database. So then we presented this back to the steering committee and we got some feedback and we also got the go ahead to continue working on this. And so that was fall 2020. And then in spring 2021, we presented this to the library directors council, again, got the go ahead, received some, received some feedback and then finalized it in preparation to present at the annual meeting today. So what is this besides just a charge from the steering committee? It is a self-assessment tool that's designed to capture your and individuals areas of expertise, uh, proficiency, and also learning opportunities. And so it is an inventory that's web-based and it's accessible from the WRLC internet. And so how it works is there is this very lovely five minute long YouTube tutorial from Tom Boone um, who created the public interface that will be sent out to you. I had some trouble kind of sharing it via Zoom. I think it's kind of hard to show video um, on video, but I do have it pulled up. And so it's just expertise.wrlc.org. And so this will all be sent to you with instructions in the tutorial. 
but this is kind of this is the sharing expertise inventory. And so as you can see, we already have had some people contribute, mostly those that have helped contribute to this project, um, but some that have not. And so once you log in, I'm just gonna do like a quick kind of show you, uh, is you would just go to your account. And as you can see, it kind of shows what I maybe identified as advanced basic or want to learn, but say I haven't done this yet, or say there's a new skill I want to add, or maybe something I just learned, all you would need to do is go to edit. And so it will have your account settings, but then it also then has the list of skills. So for every skill, you could be advanced, basic, or you would want to learn. So we have admin and management. We have scholarly communication, which is clearly not my area of expertise. We have public services. We have systems and technology. We have technical services. We have sub subject specialty. So if you're a liaison or you do collection development or something for a specific um, program or discipline. And special collections. And I do want to give a shout out to all the special collection librarians and staff who helped um, create this from scratch because this did not exist from the Polony interface. So then you would just save. And then you would live and then inventory. And so there are a couple of things that you can do to search the inventory. Um, so it will automatically have the inventory in the directory right here. But then say that you were interested in maybe developing leadership or you wanted to maybe invite somebody else from the WRLC to speak on leadership at your own library. You could just search. And so here are some people that have identified leadership maybe as basic or advanced. And so you can always just search by an actual skill. So who all knows business um, as, a, as a subject specific, things like that. But you can also search, and so you can just hit reset here. And so you can also just search by the actual skills as well. So I know one thing that I saw that people had expressed interest in is, um, you know, engaging stakeholders. So, or they're advanced or proficient in that. So you can just click, you know, analytics, who all is based. So you can search by, you know, a keyword or you can search based on the filters over here. So these are the members thus far of the inventory that have identified analytics as a skill. So the goal is to have all who are interested be involved in this inventory and have a list. So that was just a very brief introduction to what it even looks like. The tutorial is fabulous. So thank you to Tom. But um, there are some really awesome benefits to this. So I am really glad that we were charged with this by the steering committee. So it really does provide a consortium wide view of expertise. Like we all have identifying skills and knowledge. It also identifies needed expertise available at the WLC partner libraries. And it also shares your interest in developing new skills, which could then lead to new interest groups or things like that. And it also aids the SEC um, our committee in developing programs and workshops and also identifying keynote speakers and different things that we could incorporate in the annual meeting. And so it just serves as a really awesome resource. And it will live within the sharing expertise committee. So uh, the next steps now that we've introduced this to you briefly is to share your expertise. You um, and the goal is to complete the sharing expertise inventory. And so you'll just create an account, identify your areas of either expertise or interest. And then the first 150 will, will get this lovely WRLC travel mug. So thank you. And we look forward to seeing your name and skills in the inventory. Yeah, I wanna thank the steering expertise committee um, and Tom for you know, putting this all together. Um, I, I do think this is going to be a really useful tool for us because it will uh, certainly interest groups is one thing, but if you're having a, one of the values of being in a consortium is that you've got 
as I like to say, um, we have something like 700 uh, library staff within the consortium. There are 700 library experts that we can all turn to when we have a problem. And part of the beauty is we're all using the same system. We have a lot of other things that we do similarly. And so if Hall is having a problem at Marymount, there, she's got at least nine other people at other universities that she can get in touch with and say, I can't figure this out, what do I do? Uh, the sharing expertise inventory has, has the opportunity to really do that. And I think as she pointed out also, I think um, it, this, this is, could be a really useful tool for helping to find other people that share interests of yours to, to help create interest groups. So I think there's some really interesting uh, and exciting ways that this uh, new inventory tool is gonna, gonna help us out. And you will, you have to admit that is a beautiful travel mug. The, it has our wonderful WLC logo, uh, and it's a it's a gorgeous blue color. It really is lovely in person, uh, and we have at least 150. I forget. There's probably actually about 170, and they will all go to the first people uh, that uh, fill fill out the inventory. So please uh, please do that. And what we'll do is we will probably um, send the travel mugs via the courier to your campus library and that probably is the the best way for us to do it and then they and then you can pick them up there the next time you happen to be at work so okay uh thank you very much all that was great thank you and so you're welcome and so now we are turning to elena norland um, we are really fortunate to have her here today to talk about why DEI training is not working. Elena is the Professional Development and DEI Coordinator for the Association for Southeastern Research Libraries, ACERL. And ACERL is one of the consortia that we collaborate with the most. And they make their professional development offerings available at no cost to everybody in the world. I mean, it really is a remarkable gift to the library community that uh, ACERL is willing and able to make all of their professional development opportunities available to everyone. And as avid readers of the WLC newsletter will recognize, um, once COVID really got going, um, I started, and a lot of Libraries and other consortia have talked about how professional development became really important um, to their libraries during uh, COVID. That I started putting the upcoming workshops that were being provided by ACERL uh, into the WLC newsletter. Um, and all of those workshops are really the result of the work of Elena. Uh, and the people within the, obviously within the ACERL community that were presenting them. But she really did a fabulous job of increasing the, the number of professional development opportunities that were available both to the ACERL community, but really to the worldwide library community. So that's been a huge benefit for all of us. And uh, so I'm, I'm confident that we are going to have a great program now. And so I will turn it over to Elena. Uh, 